Today we're taking our first look at the new German Battlecruiser line. This is a line that I am very excited to play, and I've had already a ton of fun in the Prince Heinrich, which is the tier 7, and it's kind of an odd ship because you get these low caliber main guns that are relatively accurate, but don't have a lot of pen. It's an odd ship. Also, you don't have the best armor in the world, but you do get these really fast damage controls, which enables you to play pretty aggressive. Um, you're not as concerned about fires. It really is that pen damage you're worried about a little bit more. So being able to deal with fires a little bit easier allows you to push into positions that maybe normally you would just die to dot damage with. It's really quite a different play style than the normal German battleships. And honestly, I've had a lot of fun with it. The secondaries, of course, have the gimmick of improved accuracy. So you get Ohio accuracy, right? Ohio, Georgia, Massachusetts. That improved accuracy on the secondaries, but you still keep that German pen. So you're getting the extra range as well out of these, <laughs> these uh, secondaries. So we get 9.5 kilometer secondary range on a tier seven. Uh, pretty awesome. And paired with the extra increased accuracy, uh, these secondaries are very, very good. So taking IFHE enables the 105s to pen 32 millimeters of armor. And at tier seven, that's not a huge deal, but as soon as you get into those tier eight, tier nine games, it's really, really nice to have that extra pen. You do miss out on some fires, but really you're looking for that pen damage out of these secondaries, that consistent pen damage. There you can see one of the issues with the ship, which is eating torpedoes. Uh, the torpedo protection, not the best on this thing. I've died a lot to torpedoes which is probably a way of balancing this ship and making it so it's just not completely overpowered in a brawling situation, giving it not the best armor that can be overmatched and making it pretty weak to torpedoes. You, of course, do get a Hydra, right? That is just better than the German battleships at the same tier, right? Nice now, now Scharnhorst, don't get that. And you get these torpedoes, which are extremely long range, but very slow. They hit pretty hard, though, which is kind of nice, so throwing them out every once in a while can result in some just random torp hits that you just wouldn't expect to get, right? Like I launched those torpedoes at that nice now, and we'll see later on, they might actually impact somebody else. <laughs> We're getting rushed by a destroyer, so it is time to move on. With that nice now dead, we can push out from here without being caught in too much of a crossfire. And of course, getting these secondaries going is the main goal. You're wanting to keep them active for as long as you possibly can. Getting that extra secondary boost, once you fully activated this new secondary skill, these secondaries are really, really, really strong. Um, I'll have a clip after this one where I show an Alaska just getting melted by these secondaries. It's really, really, really powerful. And there is the random torp hit on the Hawkins over there. I assure you, he was not expecting those. <laughs> I wouldn't have been expecting those torpedoes if I was in that situation at all. Always making sure we select the right target. We don't want to click our secondaries too many times, right? Because you're going to lose a bunch of accuracy that you've built up. Every time you click a new target, assuming you didn't just kill that target, you're going to be losing a portion of your secondary accuracy. So we're wanting to maintain a level of consistency in leaving the secondaries on a specific target. But Switching him to this destroyer actually ends up getting him killed here, and we didn't actually shoot him really at all with our main guns, so really quite a powerful ship in a brawl. You don't really want to be rushing this thing, that's for sure. Now as far as this Alaska clip goes, our main guns aren't going to be doing that much damage. In fact, I probably should just switch to the AG here. I found these guns to be very, very bad. <laughs> like. Yeah, you do have more than the Nice Now does, and they're higher caliber than the Sharnors, but honestly, either one of those ships, I would say, has better gun power than this thing does. It just, they just feel quite weak, and that's probably for the best, considering this secondary power at tier 7. You are required to get damage out of these secondaries and the torpedoes. It really does feel like this ship was balanced around the expectation that these secondaries are going to do a lot of work for you. So having the somewhat weak main guns is okay. And honestly, 
it's pretty fun to have this kind of power on the secondaries. <laughs> Getting into brawls and actually being able to rely on your secondaries to kill destroyers, to kill lightly armored cruisers, it's pretty nice compared to the normal battleship line where you pretty much can count on the secondaries to do decent damage to battleships, and that's about it, because they're not very accurate. They're certainly not accurate enough to hit a lot of these smaller targets, which is very nice on this thing, being able to rely on that. It allows you to push in maybe a little bit too confidently sometimes <laughs> into destroyers and cruisers. Assuming you have your Hydro up, it is a relatively fast ship, not as fast as the Gneisnau or Sharnors, but it's decently fast and decently maneuverable. This Bliss gets taken out very quickly, and I'm assuming that I'm going to be able to use this smoke to actually go dark, but that's actually not the case. This Neptune has a Hydro up, so we're going to be permalit in front of an, a Musashi and a Freddy. So a lot of overmatch, and you're going to see just how bad this armor is in up tiers. I essentially played this ship where I would push in, I would hopefully brawl, and then I would die, and then I'd repeat. That is basically my playstyle with this thing. I was really wanting to just go all out and just try and get the funnest brawls possible. And honestly, most matches went pretty well. Not everyone, but most matches went pretty well. So that is a huge bonus for this entire line. It shows that this these ships are going to be a lot of fun for those of you that really like to brawl. You are going to die, especially in these up tiers. You can see how much damage that was actually really did to me. Uh, here, I think I just mis-aimed that a little bit too far back, uh, but we still definitely got a little bit unlucky on the dispersion. So, a little bit of column A, a little column B, but this Neptune managed to live through our salvo. He kills the Atlanta and nearly kills us with his main gun. So, we managed to live for now, but with the CV coming in and, uh, well, a Musashi that's just been staring at us the entire game, we're definitely going to die to that. <laughs> This thing is not very good against aircraft carriers. You die extremely quickly to them. The poor torpedo protection means that, well, the torpedoes are gonna be doing pretty much full damage to you. And at the same time, you have very little AA. So you're not gonna be shooting planes down. CVs will be getting multiple strikes off on you. So that's really gonna be difficult to push in as soon as there's an aircraft carrier in the game. So that's where you're gonna want to try and just stick around your teammates, stick near an AA target, an AA threat to uh, the aircraft carrier, which in this game, there really wasn't one. <laughs> As you can see, this matchmaker is pretty rough, giving the enemy team, uh, well, well, both teams, I guess, tier eight carriers against mostly tier seven and six opponents. I don't think that really should happen, considering a lot of these aircraft carriers on the power level are about one to two tier tiers higher than what they actually say. So really not a fair fight, and you can see just how much damage those Lexington torpedoes are doing, which traditionally you would consider aren't going to do that much damage to you uh, just because of the low alpha, but we just don't have the torpedo protection to deal with it. And we mistime our damage control, so we're actually on a double flood. So we're gonna die here very, very quickly. <laughs> so not every single one of my games ended up being a incredibly fun or interesting brawl. Uh, I died quite a lot trying to push it, but it does give me a very good picture of what this ship can handle. You push the ship past its limits, you die quick, and you go on to the next one, understanding a little better what the ship can and cannot do. And this game is no different. <laughs> it's another tier 9 game, and what are we doing? We're pushing hard. This Palmer decided to push in, and well, I gotta go with him, right? I can't let... I can't let somebody else show me up for uh, for aggression in a German battleship, right? So we got to go with him, even though we're pushing into a Siegfried, which is not going to end well for us. That guy is, well, he has more health, better armor, and better guns. <laughs> so, of course, he is a tier 9. I'm not saying I should have as good a you know, ship as his, but it does mean that in a brawl like this, we are relying 100% on our torpedoes and our secondaries here, our guns aren't going to the, be the main source of damage here. And unfortunately, I shouldn't have put my torpedoes where I did. I knew he was gonna turn out and try and torp me, but I just didn't put the torps where I thought he would go. I don't know why, I don't know why I torped like that. So that results in me get eating all four of the Siegfried torps. Fortunately, most of them were eaten on the bow, which saturated after the first torpedo, and then the subsequent torpedoes did less damage. 
and we get him with our other side torpedoes. Torpedoes are incredibly useful in a brawl. It really is incredibly frustrating to be brawling in a ship without torpedoes because you end up just dying to rams a lot of the time. People just want to ram so often in a brawl. It's really actually quite frustrating for me um, because these close quarters scenarios are where I have the absolute most fun in this game and everybody just goes for a ram ending that fun. So having torpedoes on your ship is a very nice addition and it allows you to get away from some of those rams and uh, continue brawling things out. Although in a situation like this one, um, yeah, we die pretty quickly here. <laughs> but not to worry, there's always another brawl to be had in the next game. And two brothers, of course I had to go up mid, and we're actually met by a cruiser. And this should be a pretty easy kill since we do overmatch his bow. And the British ships, of course we all know British cruisers, both heavy and light have gigantic citadels, but uh, we managed to just not get any. <laughs> so that's pretty unfortunate. It allows him to get his torpedoes off. And again, torpedoes are hurting this ship pretty badly. I've died a lot to torpedoes in brawls. So I'm hoping as I go higher in the tiers that my main guns are going to be a little more consistent against uh, ships in brawls, especially cruisers, where I can get maybe a little bit more damage out before they get their torpedoes off. But we do end up dying to the DD anyway. No way we were gonna deal with that. So in the next Two Brothers game I got, a little while later, you can see me being a little bit more careful. I launch both of my torpedoes in, just as a, just in case, and I have my Hydro going, trying to get that early information. That was the mistake I made. I just had my Hydro available. I could have known what was coming before committing down the gap, at least, you know, partway down the gap. I would have known that that Devonshire was coming and I probably wouldn't have pushed as aggressively. So having that information probably would have helped me a lot. So we change that up next time we go down. Again, every time you die, it's a learning opportunity, unless you die to RNG. In that case, well, <laughs> there's not really much to learn, is there? <laughs> Broadside Congo, and what do we get? Six kilometers? Yeah, not amazing. These guns are not amazing. I've found them to be just really bad, honestly. Like tier five gunpower is basically what I've found. There's ships at tier six and that I would just way prefer the guns on compared to this ship, which fair enough, the ship has other strengths for sure, but it does seem like it's quite difficult to make use of the secondaries, especially when you're in those tier nine games. I've really, really struggled with this ship when in those full up tiers. This ship looks amazing, especially in this game, uh, in these down tier games where you're facing tier fives, where basically everybody else has the same gun power as you, except they're two tiers lower than you. Um, but as soon as you get into those up tiers, the ship does tend to struggle. So I'm excited to see what the higher tier German battle cruisers are gonna look like as far as their gun power goes. Getting those higher caliber guns might help a little bit. I understand that they're not exactly the same as the uh, 406s and 420s on the normal German tech tree, right, that the Freddy and the Kerfers get. They do have worse pen and worse alpha, I believe, but I'm still excited to see what they bring. Um, of course, we have a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful island here to our right, or our left, sorry, that blocks all of our torpedoes, even though the game gives us no indication that there's a shelf there that would block our torpedoes. I'm not sure how hard it would be for Wargaming to implement that, but really, why can't we just have the game tell us when our torpedoes would hit the island with our little indicator? It, it seems like it would be such an easy thing to implement and just a nice quality of life thing. But we do finally get a couple citadels on this Congo, but as you can see, it's by no means consistent. And he's left on 54 HP. Our Omaha decides to just push out and die. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, that guy is going to live just for now. Of course, playing two brothers mid, you don't really want to push out of this gap too far. You're going to just invite crossfires, right? Your goal is to try and distract enough of the enemy team that your team gets control of the flanks. And unfortunately, in this game, we really haven't managed to do that, as you can see. But time to push. We get our double strike secondaries on the Helena, main guns on the Mayoko. And coming around this corner, I'm not sure why this Congo didn't just shoot me. Uh, 
Uh, he definitely could have got some pretty good damage. But rear turrets on the Congo. Maybe a triple strike? Uh, not sh quite sure if that would have happened. And for whatever reason, this Mayoko actually torped not the gap, but next to the gap. So we actually end up eating a torpedo. That's why I was trying to push out away from the gap. I was trying to avoid the torpedoes that I thought would have just gone into the gap. But uh, that's our fourth kill in, what, 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so. Uh, pretty nice little cleanup there at the end. So this ship clearly is a ton of fun. And for those of you who really do enjoy that brawling battleship, I think you're going to love this ship and the line. I think the tier 9 and 10 are really going to be the highlights as we're getting into that concealment matching secondary range kind of thing. That's going to be really, really nice. But uh, tier 7 is quite a bit of fun as well, at least at this point. So the build that I have on this thing looks like this. We're taking IFHE just to get those higher tier battleships with that 32 mil pen. Not necessary. Uh, you could skip this on the tier 7, but I think on the tier 8, 9, and 10, you're definitely going to want that for those 105s to get that pen up to 32 millimeters. Of course, we're taking secondaries, Adrenaline Rush, trying to maximize the damage output of these secondaries. And I am taking Concealment and Fire Prevention. Something that I am considering is actually swapping Fire Prevention for the Emergency Repair Expert. And that, I'm not sure if that's going to be the right way to play these ships. I'm going to have to do some testing as I get into the higher tier ones. But you do have this extremely fast cooldown on the damage control. So that might make up for not having fire prevention where you just don't have to worry about fires as much. And then getting that extra heal would be quite nice. You can see there were some situations in these games that I showed you where that last heal would have been nice to have. Having four heals, I think, is a great number to have. Five, sometimes you just run into the situation where you just don't make use of them. <laughs> Whereas four, I can pretty regularly get use out of. So that is something I'm going to consider and try and test out as I progress further with these ships. Um, but you can see the upgrades here. I'm using prop mod because I am trying to get into island chains and trying to poke in and out and position my ship around islands. Prop mod is very, very nice for that. And of course, we're running the secondary upgrades. So if you're wondering how I got access to the tier seven a little bit earlier than I normally would have um, by not spending money, well, I actually used up all of the community tokens, get 50 German tokens. <laughs> so I kind of used up everything. You can see I only have 400 left. <laughs> But it did manage to get me to the tier 7 that little bit quicker and allowed me to get this video out. So that's something you can consider doing, um, but I gotta wait a little bit until I can get the tier 8 or maybe even the tier 9. I doubt, I doubt I'll actually get those ones for free, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll look into using some of uh, the money that I've earned from YouTube or Twitch just to get access to these a little earlier and bring out some videos. I'm really excited to play them, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet. Um, but yeah, not being a CC, don't have access to those things. Uh, you can expect a video tomorrow talking about uh, my decision regarding that, but for now, just know that I have decided to hold off and decided to wait. I'll talk a little bit about that more tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching this video and let me know what you think. Are you excited about these new German battlecruisers? I sure am.